Week three of the 2024 NCAA season proved to be more exciting than anyone could have predicted. One team had 100% of their routines, another imploded in an arena that was too cold, and another meets results may become entirely null and void, and that's just the beginning. For those new here, my name is Kinsley, and I'm the host of Neutral Deductions, a podcast all about men's gymnastics. Here's the breakdown of everything that happened in week three. This is the Neutral Deductions podcast, men's gymnastic news, coverage, and analysis. Hosted by Kinsley Beal. We're going to start at the Rocky Mountain Open because that's where I was on site this weekend. It was a quad meet between Oklahoma, Nebraska, the host Air Force, and Jim Axe, Rocky Mountain Mavericks, who made their season debut. I do need to make a correction from last week because I did say that ASU was going to be competing here and they were not scheduled to be competing, but they will be competing against Oklahoma next weekend. So this meet was one I was really looking forward to because Nebraska was the final team to open the NCAA season, and they have so many exciting and talented gymnasts on their team. I think that they are often overlooked by many other news outlets, and I honestly can't understand why, because they have athletes performing unique gymnastics at a high level. I was also really looking forward to seeing the rematch between Air Force's Patrick Hoops and OU's Ignacio Yockers, both of whom have some of the most difficult pommel horse routines in the world. They both fell last week in their matchup at Oklahoma, and so I was really hoping that both of them were going to hit and we were going to see who is the best of the best if they both hit on the same day. And just for comparison about how difficult their routines are, at last year's World Championships, the only person who competed a routine with more difficulty was Max Whitlock. So both Hoops and Yockers can compete a 6-5 difficulty and Max Whitlock competed a 6-9. So finally, the other thing I was really looking forward to seeing was Oklahoma and what they were going to be able to do in terms of team performance. Last weekend, they were only two tenths behind Stanford's score, and I was sure that they would be really motivated to overtake the top score, especially with Stanford not competing this week. But to be honest, they completely blew Stanford's score away from last week. Oklahoma led the meet from start to finish, well, sort of to the finish. So originally, when the final scores came up at the end of the meet, we all thought that Nebraska had won. In fact, the head coach, Mark Williams, like went over and congratulated um, John Robinson, who's the head coach at Nebraska, saying like, great job. So Nebraska's score came up, it was a 409 something, and then Oklahoma's score was a 408. But at that point, you could see that Daniel Simmons had a zero uh, on still rings because he had been injured. And OU originally thought that they were going to have to count that zero. But because he had um, sort of like a metal c- medical retirement from the meet, they were actually able to put in another gymnast score, but they had to take a one point deduction to do so. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, when the final score comes up, OU has a 420.350. And it is such a big score that there was a gasp throughout the entire audience. And after the meet, I was able to grab an interview with head coach Mark Williams, and he shared that this was the first time that his team had hit 100% since 2013. And it would certainly be impossible to highlight everything from the Sooners from that meet because everything was just so good. So I'll just pick a couple of routines that I felt were world-class and really deserve to be talked about. And the first was the floor routine from Emery Dodonley, and the second is the pommel horse routine from Ignacio Yocker. So Dodonley stuck over half of his passes. He had a massive 15 point which would have been higher than any score at the floor event finals at Worlds last year, meaning he would have been world champion if he would have done that same routine and gotten the same score under the same panel of judges. Obviously, it's different routines, so there's no guarantee. And also, he stuck his dismount, and in NCAA, you do get an extra tenth of bonus for sticking your dismount. So, you know, there's all these complicated factors. But all of this to say that... Dodonley's routine is world-class, and should he make that Turkish Olympic team later this year, he is going to be a favorite for that Olympic floor final. Now, moving on to Ignacio Yockers, he was the last of the three pommel specialists in this um, in this meet to go. So the first one who went was Air Force's Patrick Hoops, and he fell on his routine. And then Nebraska's Cooper Giles went, and he stayed on, but he didn't get full credit for his dismount, and so his D score was three tenths lower. And then Ignacio Yockers went, and he had a pretty clean routine, but again, like Giles, he didn't get his full difficulty on the dismount, and so his score was a little bit bit lower than normal, but still a massive 14.950. And both he and Patrick Hoops will have the D score to petition a spot for Winter Cup should the MPC or the Senior Selection Committee decide to accept them into that spot. Some other moments to highlight from the Rocky Mountain Open were Nebraska's floor rotation. So Luke James was the penultimate gymnast on floor, and luckily he was able to cover his routine really well. Um, But 
on his fourth pass, he was supposed to complete a three and a half, a back three and a half, and he only ended up competing a triple twist. And if you watch the video, um, you'll see that he sort of like stops and is like, oh crap, what am I supposed to do next? And so he's trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do? Because he's supposed to end with a triple full and you can't compete the same skill twice. And so ultimately he's like working through his routine and he does end up ending with a back two and a half. Um, his routine is up on Neutral Deductions YouTube. So I definitely recommend giving that routine a watch as well as Sam Phillips routine, who's finally back in the lineup after having to sit out last season due to injury. So not only does Sam have really difficult and beautiful tumbling, but he also brings the artistry into men's gymnastics that is so often missing. And as always, he ended the routine by crowning himself it's a great moment. The crowd loves it. I would really love to see Nebraska adapt more of the artistry that Sam delivers in floor routine. Like you have someone here who has this creativity and ability to deliver artistry in various different forms. And I would love to see him be able to maybe coach and, and influence some of the other gymnasts on Nebraska to incorporate that into their floor routines. Um, another interesting thing I want to point out about Nebraska was that they didn't actually compete their full lineup at this meet. So the competition of the Rocky Mountain Open is in the name. It's an open format. And so they chose to let three of their gymnasts compete in the individual rotation to have a chance to trial more routines and give more athletes a shot at qualifying for a Winter Cup. And this strategy definitely paid off from an individual perspective as Toby Ling was able to grab the final spot for Winter Cup. Now, it may have hurt their team score because you probably are going to want to substitute some of Ling's scores into the team score, but overall, it was a really good strategy for Nebraska. So as I mentioned, this was a Winter Cup qualifier, and the three athletes that were able to qualify for Winter Cup were Oklahoma's Fuzzy Bennis, who totaled a massive 85.2. That is a top eight score at the World Championship, so watch out for Fuzzy this year. I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. And then freshman Colin Flores also qualified a spot in his first ever collegiate all-around competition. And then, as I mentioned earlier, Toby Lang finished out the top three. Um, a final moment of comedy and probably my favorite moment of the meet was Air Force's Jake Sampier on vault. He stuck his vault and then like Usain Bolt, he struck a pose and he absolutely lost it. And that video is on our collection of videos on neutral deductions and also is on our highlight from the Rocky Mountain Open. And I highly recommend going and watching those videos. Neutral Deductions is your exclusive gymnastics news platform focused entirely on men's gymnastics. To show your support, please subscribe to Neutral Deductions' YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. Okay, now moving on to the Navy Open. Ohio State won the meet with the midshipmen coming in second. It was expected to be a really close battle for the title between Ohio State, Navy, and Penn State, but Penn State was nowhere near the top scoring teams, finishing 12 points behind first place. And I asked around to see if there were any extenuating factors, and it seems that the gym was really, really cold. One spectator apologized for the sports analogy, but they compared the home advantage for Navy as similar to the home field advantage for Buffalo or Green Bay in the NFL, as Navy is currently training in less than ideal um, conditions because their gym is being renovated and it's kind of cold right now. But regardless of the circumstances, Ohio State was able to put in a really solid performance and they remain one of only four undefeated teams in the division alongside Stanford, Oklahoma, and Michigan. And when asked about their performance, head coach Rustam Sharapov said, we made some improvements from last week, but there's still a lot more that we will focus on and prepare for the number two matchup against Oklahoma and Arizona State in Norman, Oklahoma. Now, while yet to break the 400 barrier, there were still some bright spots for the champion. Sophomore Justin Sicone stuck his vault in the second week in a row, leading the Buckeyes to a massive 71.750 on vault. Kane Spencer was the other event winner for Ohio State, and he won parallel bars for the second straight meet in a row. Now, the home team Navy came in second, just a little over six points behind Ohio State. Navy also came away with two individual event winners. Sam Burdagunta picked up yet another event title on floor while he is now two for two this season. And Isaiah Drake picked up a win on parallel bars. Like Ohio State, the midshipmen's best team score was on vault, where they tallied a 71.9. And head coach Kip Simmons said, Halsey was rocking this afternoon. That's where they were. Uh, that's the arena where everything was happening. 
And he said the place was packed and our team showed up ready to compete. He did say that they had several mistakes this afternoon, which is expected in January, and that the key to today's performance was that they never let a mistake turn into a disaster. He said, overall, this was another solid work day for this team. I'm very proud of who this group of guys have become. We only have had two meets so far, and it's already been a memorable season for Navy's men's gymnastics. Penn State rounded out the podium at the Navy Open with a performance far from their best. Still, they did take the most individual event titles of any team this competition. Senior Michael Giroux made his season debut with a win on pommel horse after battling some injuries. Head coach Randy Jepson said, I'm really pleased with Michael Giroux with his effort. This is the first time this season that he's really got to get in and compete. He did a great job on pommel horse. His parallel bars and rings performance was really solid. I'm pleased with that. The other two wins came from graduate student Nate Warren, who got second his second consecutive win on rings. An international student and newcomer Axeli Karsikas notched his first ever event title on high bar with a 13.850. Springfield and William & Mary rounded out the competition in 4th and 5th place respectively. Both Springfield and William & Mary had record performances from the athletes named Sam. So Sam Lee of William & Mary continued to impress and had a career high vault of 14.7 which notched 3rd place at the Navy Open and also has tied William & Mary's record for 2nd highest vault score ever. And for Springfield it was Sam Kaplan who placed 2nd in the all around with a 75.050. Okay, now to Greenville versus Illinois. So everything that I may talk about here may become null and void in the record book because the teams were competing on a non-regulation surface on vault and therefore all of their scores may be thrown out. Now this is not the first time a team's results have been thrown out or may be thrown out. Teams have showed up late to competitions before after all the teams have finished competing and the judges stuck around and agreed to stay late and score their vaults but in the end the schools were nullified because it wasn't according to the regulation for competition so I won't be surprised if all of the scores are thrown out. And of course, that would be really disappointing because this is, this is the first meet that Greenville has ever hosted, but they were supposed to be competing in a different venue. There was a conflict and the meet was moved to the practice gym. Both teams agreed to compete on the non-regulation surface. However, they didn't apply and receive an exemption ahead of time. So now the decision has to go before a committee and then we will know if the results will stand or not. Till that time, as it stands now, today, January 21st, Greenville has a new program record of 388.850. They have been so impressive for a second season team, and they continue to make huge strides, especially on vault and floor. As a more established team, Illinois did come away with a win in the team all around and all events. Tate Costa continues his success in the all-around by winning this dual meet and also took the parallel bars title. Brandon Ding won pommel horse with a 14.450. Reigning national champion Ashton Anaya took the silver rings title with a 14.450 as well, which was over a point better than second place. And anytime anyone wins an event over a point over second place, you know it's a big score. Garrett Truly took the vault title and Lowen Logan Myers won high bar. Head coach Daniel Ribeiro said it was an honor getting to compete in Greenville's first ever home competition. We are excited about pulling out the win and sweeping the events. We also had some really standout performances, but we need to start making certain improvements. Both our hit and stick percentages came out flat. Rings was the only event we escaped without a fall. This is going to be an important week ahead if we expect to take down Oklahoma in our home opener. The guys are motivated to get back to work. Neutral Deductions recently launched this year and is entirely funded by listener contributions. If you'd like to support the show and help promote men's gymnastics, kindly consider making a donation through the PayPal link provided in the show notes. All donations are greatly appreciated. Thank you. So rounding out the final NCAA meets was Army at Michigan. The Wolverines easily cruised to a victory at home with a score nearly 30 points higher than Army. Michigan saw the return of Paul Judah and Fred Richard in their lineups. Judah competed in five of six events, notably competing a downgraded vault, and Richard competed in two events with an incredibly impressive performance on pommel horse. Michigan led the meet from start to finish and won all six event titles. No athlete from Michigan or Army competed in the all-around. So looking at the event title, sophomore Landon Blick set the highest score on floor with a 14.3. In his 2024 debut, the NCAA champion Fred Richard broke a program record on pommel horse. His 15.0 is the highest pommel score since the new could of points by four tens. Javier Alfonso continues his streak of victories on still rings, and Paul Judah took the vault title with a stock cause one and a half. His 15.0 ties his career best, although I do want to point out that David Wilma also got a stick on vault, meaning two sticks in a row for the junior. 
Logan McCowan put in this career best performance on parallel bars for 14.3. And then, of course, Fred Richard took the title on high bar. The addition of Judah and Richard provided a huge and much needed boost for the Wolverines. Usually a team to peak later in the season, they still need to find another 8 to 10 points to be competitive for the national title in April. Looking at the NCAA overall, despite strong performances from across the country, no one was able to beat Stanford's team totals on still rings and high bar. The Cardinals will return to competition this weekend at the Stanford Open, which will be the final Winter Cup qualifier. Now, a quick update from the elite world. This past weekend, 2022 world champion Brody Malone returned to competition three months ahead of schedule at the Houston National Invitational. He helped Evo win the team title and competed on three events. He is expected to add high bar back into his repertoire later this season. Yul Moldauer came away with a win in the all around with an incredibly impressive 85.4, according to Meet Scores Online. Even though the score was really impressive, it's worth noting that overall ring scores seemed very, very generous at this meet. Um, Stanford Riley's Loose also got an 80.7 with a 15.2, I believe, on still rings. And then Ian Gunther was third with a 79.8. Gunther has improved his score by a point from the competition at Beast. Beach Blast Invitational last week, and likely he will need another point to secure a spot at Winter Cup next week at the Stanford Invitational. I want to take a moment to mention Thomas Tiddley. He's a junior Canadian gymnast who scored a 79.0 in the all-around, so very impressive for him as well, one to watch out for in the next Olympic cycle. Senior national team members Shane Wiskus, Alex Diab, Blake Soon, Kern Phillips, and Steven Adarasik made their 2024 debuts at the Houston National Invitational. Wiskus competed on three events with his best score coming on high bar. He's still recovering from a back injury that took him out of Pan American Games and will be looking to add back the all around to his program later this season. Blake Soon had kind of a rough meet where he scored at 10 on both pommel horse and parallel bars. He's incredibly strong on both events and will certainly look to improve upon this performance later this year. Alex Diab only competed still rings. His 15.3 is a world-class score, but I haven't seen a video of his performance yet, and it's a little bit hard to evaluate whether that's a true 15 score. It's a score that he can certainly attain, but as is evident by some of the other scores, rings was a little bit high. So I'd love to see a video of this to sort of confirm where his score actually was. And then rounding out the group was Steven Adarasik, who earned a 13.9 on Pommel Horse. Again, no videos have surfaced so far, so I don't know what the routine looked like, but the score would indicate a fall. Now, Kern Phillips was there and supposed to compete, but on meet scores online, it says he has zeros across the board. So I don't know what happened if he ended up withdrawing, but I don't have any information about his scores thus far. So before we move on to a little bit of business, we have gotten another five-star review. This one is from Nicole Ray 19, who said, this is easy for me to learn. This podcast is super helpful and I'm a fan of women's gymnastics, but know little about men's. I love that the episodes are short and informative and right to the point. Kinsley makes it easy to understand. Thank you. So if you would please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever wherever you get your podcast, it really helps others find neutral deductions and learn more about men's gymnastics. If you would like to help bring more live men's gymnastics coverage, please consider donating. We are entirely listener supported at this point, and even ten dollars helps us cover a meal. We have received seven hundred dollars in donations thus far, which has covered the flight to Beach Plus Imitational, the drive to Colorado Springs, housing in Colorado Springs for the night, and then the flight to and from Winter Cup, which is so amazing. But the hotels in Winter Cup are really pricey. And so we're looking for about $800 in listener contributions to help us get through Winter Cup. If you are able and willing to help bring this coverage to life, the PayPal link is in every show note and at the bottom of every article on neutraldeductions.com where you can donate via PayPal or Stripe. And Stripe is great. So if you don't have a PayPal account, you can just put in your credit card information and provide a donation of any amount. If you have any questions, comments, or insider tips, you can email Kensley at neutraldeductions at gmail.com. That is all for this week. We will see you next time.